Hello and welcome to the Chart of the Week video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Tuesday the 6th of October 2020 and the time has just gone 17.38 British Summer Time. And this week's Chart of the Week is Bitcoin. Now, first things first, let's take a look at the wider price action. Uh, we can see here that Bitcoin was in quite decent shape in the middle of February, just before the pandemic struck. We saw an aggressive sell-off in the cryptocurrency along with you know, most other assets. Um, and then ever since then, it's had a quite a decent bounce back. We can see here in the middle of March, it, it traded below $4,000. In the middle of August, um, five months later, it got up to north of $12,000. So it, it tripled, more than tripled, tripled in value uh, in the space of about five months. And since then, we can, we can see that, that the price action uh, has been a bit range bound. Uh, the market has cooled back a, li cooled a little. So we've seen the lower low, the lower high, a lower low, a lower high. You know, the, now we've seen the lows of late September are above the lows of early September. But as, you know, the highs we've seen in late September have yet to take out the highs of mid September. So we've been a bit range bound recently. So where do we go from here? Well, let's not forget that that wider upper, the, the wider trend uh, is still very much to the upside. If we take a look at the lows, the lows have been getting higher. That would suggest that the bias is still to the upside. Even though we haven't seen a massive move to the upside, the lows are getting higher. And we can see here that, that, that this yellow line here, the, the 100 moving average, which comes into play at 10,268, 10, we can see that that has acted nicely as support on a few occasions. And if we continue to hold above that metric, it's likely that the wider upper trend is going to continue. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking up, heading up towards 11,000, you know, the next big number up. Um, but also we can see this just north of 11,000 is this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which comes to play at 11,100, sorry, 11,114. And there have seen um, that area be of importance in the last few months. You know, it acted as both as, as you know, as resistance on a few occasions. It even acted as support as well. Um, not too long ago, back in, in early September. And if a metric has acted as support or resistance in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future, although there are no guarantees. We can also see at the current level of the of the 50 day moving average uh, at 11,114 is not too far away from the mid September highs. It's a bit north of it. So if you do break above that, it will be fairly significant. Uh, and then if you go north of that again, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 12,000. And if we go beyond 12,000, we could be looking at heading up towards the mid, the August highs in around 12,477. And keep in mind those 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 levels uh, were last seen in uh, in July of last year, July 2019. So give indication of how strong the market was uh, only uh, only say about, about two months ago. Um, conversely, if we do have a decent break to, to the downside, we could see support come into play in around 10,000, you know, big psychological number. A move below that could take us down toward this zone here. Um, the lows of, of, of September 9th in around 9,850, down towards the, the highs uh, of the 23rd of July in around 9,678. This entire zone here, um, to be honest, anything say from 10,000 down to 9,678. Notice how the market gapped higher here. So a gap was created. Now, one of the myths about gaps is that they're always filled. They're not always filled, but they are often filled. So it is quite possible we could move all the way lower, fill that gap, and then continue on in the wider upper trend that's been in place. Now, just before we um, finish the video, let's take a quick look at what's going on with Ethereum. Um, and, the, and, the, and the purposes of that is Dow theory. One of the tenets of Dow theory is that the averages must confirm each other, which essentially say, states markets that are, that are quite similar should be moving in, you know, are likely to be moving in the same direction. So take a look at the price action in Ethereum. We can see here in the middle, middle, of, middle of March, uh, it was north, it was below $100. At a massive rally into September, when it got up to well over four hundred dollars, got got it got up towards um, five hundred bucks. So it had a massive rally, like Bitcoin. Uh, it's had a bit of a pullback since then, but the wider upward trend is still in play. 
if we do see a break higher in Ethereum, if we do see Ethereum get back above its respective 50-day moving average here, this blue line here, it'll make it more likely that we could see something similar in Bitcoin. But obviously, there are no guarantees. Uh, thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.